Ah, that was quite a surprise. Fighting my way up to the water's surface and catching my breath, Crow was there to greet me. I guess, ever since I got my hands on the watch, I've been constantly having experiences like this. That's not the damn point! Mm, why is that? I worry about that myself, thanks. Brushing off Crow's unsolicited advice, I pulled my soaked shirt off of me. If I wring this, taking care not to get it wrinkled, it should dry out faster. I could only do something this brazen at the beach after all. But then again, I'd only gotten into this mess because this was the beach. By the way, where is everyone else? Well, that's good to hear, but I'm surprised to hear she brought a towel along. I guess I'll have to thank them later on. Not just for my sake, but Michiru's as well. I certainly wouldn't want her to get wet, if you catch my drift. <laughs> and what about DD? They couldn't have just left her that way, right? Huh, isn't she quite the prepared one? As that thought crossed my mind, I felt a towel suddenly being draped over my shoulders. Well, at least she changed clothes. I didn't want to cause a fuss, so I just asked the first question that came to mind. Did you really have to change into your maid outfit? I can see that it gets you pumped up. That reminds me, she brought this get up to the arcade the other day too. Does she actually luck that around with her every time she goes out? I see. I guess it'd be like her work uniform. And cooking would be a little dangerous, what with all the flames and oil around. Which would leave my half naked ass out of the equation. Well, I suppose I can take you up on that. I wiped my hair dry with the towel DD handed me. It's the same one I use at home too. She must have brought it along. It's not really something she has to apologize for, though. Like she was just trying not to sully the mood, so she took action instead, right? I can figure that much out. The only lasting damage I had was the surprise of being thrown that far. Plus, I was totally soaked, but that was hardly anything new. But DD, it's alright if you wanna take a rest, you know. The way she tilted her head slightly was just adorable. But I could see that her hair was still wet. You aren't at home, so you don't have to do all that maid work. DD tried to show off her energy by hopping up and down. She certainly looked well enough. I just don't want you to tire yourself out or anything. Besides, the entire reason I invited you along was so you could have a chance to relax. Yeah, ever since you got here, all you've done is made stuff, right? And the heat today had your old tummy tuckered out, too. I came up with all this to repay you for your service. Well, I wouldn't really call it secret myself. I just wanted you to rest and relax, without having to be conscious of anything. And on top of that, I really did want her to be able to relax and have fun. 
Likewise, thanks for your help as always. That's good to hear. Um, uh, hmm. Nah, I'll have to pass. If you ask me something like that, of course I'm gonna be embarrassed. That is indeed how it is. If I tried to pull that on you, you'd get all tripped up too, wouldn't you? Hey, is that setting yourself up for failure or what? Well, it'd work out for me all the same anyway. DD. Why don't you leave the cooking up to everyone else and rest? I want to just relax together with you. How about it? So? I really want you to. Still, when it comes to barbecue preparations, that's quite a bit different from your own work, isn't it? Besides, Mew's the one in the limelight here, so the most you'll be doing is just informal help, right? I don't really think that kind of stuff requires a maid. Ha! Check and mate! Now Didi's got no choice but to rest. Take care of me? Well, I suppose. Hey, too close! Personal space! I raised my hands up to make sure I don't accidentally touch her in a weird way. No, I can do that myself. It's not restrained, but... Her breasts! She's so close to me that her breasts are touching. Why is she so aggressive? Uh, anyway, I strengthened my grip on the towel. It's not that I don't, but... I'm happy and all, but you really ought to rest once in a while. Huh? I ended up loosening my hold on the towel. Oof! Which was pulled away and pushed up against me. Ah! So that's what she meant. That sure was misleading, or maybe she said that on purpose. But even I could tell how disappointed I was. I know you love it and all. The towel that had been up against me slowly pulled away. For a while, I froze up, pondering the meaning of her words. Smiling at me, towel in hand, Didi turned and went off. Ah, wait, Didi! I called out for her too late, out of bewilderment. I'd only wanted to confirm what she meant, but she was already well over halfway to Makoto and the others. Even if I tried to follow, I wouldn't get to her before she got to them. And regardless, I didn't feel the desire to do so. Was she just teasing me? I doubted it. Surely there was even the slightest trace of affection mixed in. But before I could return those feelings, she had already run off. Not as a sign of her rejection, but perhaps because she needed to put it off a little longer. I don't get it. I was exhausted, yet also thrilled at the same time. It was an unusual sort of emotion. Could even a totally innocent girl like Didi make a man's heart flutter this way? Girls are so weird. While the main event for today had yet to begin, I already felt as though I'd had my fill of excitement. I felt exhausted, but also contented. 
Well, whatever. Just like I said, for now it was probably a good idea to relax. My body was being shaken gently. I could tell it was Didi from hearing her voice. So she's waking me up. It's morning already? I had wanted to wake up on my own, but so much for that. Alright already, I'm waking up now. Mm, good morning. Huh? It's bright, but the sun's setting. And I'm still in school? Maybe I was dreaming. I squinted from the brightness of the surroundings as I surveyed the classroom, awash in a glow of red and orange. Didi was sitting on the chair beside me. The two of us were completely alone in the classroom, no other students were present. Looking out the window, I saw students heading towards the school gate. I see. So classes are over? Exactly! Ah, I remember now. You were doing your leftover homework and the daily monitor's duties, right? Didi forgot to do her homework that was due today. After pleading with the teacher, we managed to convince him to let her hand it in tomorrow. But if Didi went home, she'd only get wrapped up in her maid work, so I had her stay here. Sorry, I promised I'd help you with what you didn't understand at all. Don't worry, this. I don't know I thought you'd take less than an hour to get everything done, though. Homeroom had ended two hours ago. <laughs> hey, no need to laugh it off. I'm not angry or anything. If anything, I feel like I should be apologizing to you. <laughs> I see. Thanks. I thought Didi was more exhausted than me, but I guess I can't argue if she tells me that. I guess I'll have to make it up to her sometime. I stretched my limbs out to clear the fog from my mind. Do not do that! I'm serious! Don't even think about it! I'm not joking! I'm sure, so stop wiggling your fingers at me! Ugh, clever girl. It felt a little vexing to have the joke be at my own expense. Anyway, putting that aside. What were you doing after you finished your homework? Oh, one of those. I figured they'd start handing them out sooner or later. There was still ample time until the deadline, but I guess she was working on it in her free time. Not like mine would require very much effort to finish. After all, my post-graduation life is more or less set in stone. I don't think it's a bad thing all the same. So, Didi, what are you wanting to do? What? Perpetual? What kind of shady occupation is that? What? Never mind, it's nothing. I waved my hand in front of my face as if to blow away the delusions in my head. This is Didi we're talking about. I'm sure she wasn't implying anything. Anyway, what kind of perpetual servanthood did you have in mind? Should have guessed it. Nah, I'm just a little surprised you'd rather keep being a maid. I mean, don't you want to go to university? 
Hey now. というのはブリティッシュなジョークですけど、今の私はホームステイ中なおですからね。進学でも就職でも日本とイギリスのどっちにするのかもあります。I see. That's fair enough. Now that I think about it, she probably will have to go home once she graduates. She's already achieved her goal of meeting her fiance by now. どっちにしても一寸先はアウンローンです。大人になってからのことなんて思いつきませんからね。なので今一番好きなことを選びたいと思いました。And that's being a maid, right? 正確にはご主人様のメイドですね。It was a little embarrassing to hear her say that to my face. She said she wanted to be by my side from now on too. もしくはイギリスのアップルファームでのんびり暮らすくらいですけど、でも日本のご飯には勝てませんね。You really are taking food as a huge consideration, I see. Yes. I suppose when it comes to the three basic necessities of life, you can't just skimp out on one of them. They say home is where you hang your hat, but wherever you may settle down can certainly affect how well you're able to live. ご主人様は進学ですよね。More or less, I've already decided where I'd like to go too, so I'll aim for that. Though it's not really something I dream or aspire for like you do. It's more like something I'm obligated to do. 私も将来の夢というほどではありませんけど。Didi then clapped her hands together. 夢といえばですけど、さっきはどんな夢を見てたんですか？ Remember when we went to the beach before? I was dreaming about that. 行きましたね。ご主人様が海に投げられてたのが印象的でした。I never knew I could have flown that far myself. 夢で空を飛んでいたのですか？ Nah, I wasn't experiencing a specific point in time. More like. I was just caught up in the general feeling of the whole thing. That reminds me, Didi, have you been doing all right since then? I was still groggy, likely because that whole experience had left me somewhat exhausted. I mean, it is summer. <laughs> Are you sure? All of a sudden, Didi pressed her finger against my lips. It was soft. Yet cold to the touch. She smiled ever so gently, ever so kindly. <laughs> Although Didi had touched her finger to my lips to keep me from talking, she did not pull it away immediately. My gaze was fixated only on her. If my lips moved in the slightest, they would be parted from Didi's touch. ご主人様が私の心配をしてくれて嬉しかったです。Didi's smiling visage was directly before me. Leaning forward, she moved ever closer towards my lips, and then I could feel my heart stand still. I wasn't able to think anymore, so right now I was able to do what I was yearning for. Didi. ご主人様。Taking Didi by the hand, I moved her finger away from my lips, and then, still clutching her by the arm, my face gently drew closer to hers. This was a time for us alone. <gasps> Didi, my face was reflected in Didi's eyes, but only for a fleeting moment. My eyelids closed, blocking the reflection. In contrast with that small gesture, she showed no resistance. In fact, she seemed more than willing to accept me. A breeze stirred. Didi's sweet fragrance drifted through the air. I could feel her warmth through the gentle contact of our lips. Before I realized it, the distance between us became reduced to nothing. It was such a gentle, soft, and pleasant sensation. Our surroundings faded into the distance. My heart was beating as though it were trying to leap out of my chest. <sighs> our lips parted slightly as we each regained control of our breathing. All the sounds in our vicinity sounded miles away. 
I wanted more. I wanted to kiss Dee Dee even more. <sighs> Her calling out to me brought me back to my senses. Ah, uh. Dee Dee's face was close enough to brush against my own. Within her moistened eyes lay a blurred reflection of myself. <gasps> Then, of a sudden, came a rush of blood to Dee Dee's head. Even in the redness of the evening sun, the redness of her face was plain to see. <laughs> How should I say it? Um, the mood was right. I mean, you were kind of going along with it too. <laughs> Didi's cheeks were as red as an apple. As I was looking at her, I became aware of how much my own face was burning up as well. Suddenly, I felt incredibly embarrassed for doing that without thinking. But above that, there was a feeling of happiness. Yeah, right. I got a little too caught up in the moment. One could certainly say I jumped the gun. Dee Dee had certainly been honest with how she felt about me. But up until now, I hadn't returned her feelings in the slightest. I ought to have told her how I felt and started a proper relationship with her before the thought of kissing her ever crossed my mind. Da, yeah? Did he just cool it for a second? I know that, but there's something I wanted to tell you. While Did he remained flustered, I took her by the hand. Holding her hand like that, while staring directly into her eyes, finally allowed her to calm down. I totally screwed up the order of things here, but I want to tell you something. Dee Dee, Dorothy Davenport, I'm in love with you. This doesn't have anything to do with our engagement either, I'm head over heels in love with you. I could tell my own voice was quivering. My face was practically on fire and sweat ran down my back. But I'd managed to come right out and tell her. <laughs> At that moment, I felt like I could scream. <laughs> Uh, eh? Why is that? Eh? She loves me, but she can't go out with me? What does that mean? My feelings of elation quickly withered. Wait a minute! Didi was smiling and she seemed happy, but something was wrong. She really did seem beside herself when she apologized. You love me, but you can't go out with me. What did you mean by that? Only if you want to. Also, I'm sorry for kissing you like that. Huh. She is happy about the kiss. The confession too. And yet, she can't go out with me? Sorry, I think my brain's melting or something. I can't process what you're saying. Are you against the engagement? Or have you come to dislike me, or... I have a bad feeling about this. It's a feeling that I have since that one scene in the arcade. Where she got so tired all of a sudden. Did you just say, that's why? 
好きだからレイ君の恋人になってはいけないんです Didi shook her head gently, her gentle smile still unwavering. But why? You can't go out with me because you're in love with me? I don't understand. I tightened my grip on her hand just slightly and told her my honest feelings. My gaze at Didi was even more sincere than when I'd confessed to her. <laughs> After a moment, Didi let the tension drain from her body. Her smile was not one of happiness, but of resignation. Huh? God damn it. I feared it would be something like this. Well, just a damn minute. My head was filled with shock and confusion. All the same, I wanted to make sure I wasn't misinterpreting the simplistic declaration DD had just given. I took a few deep breaths so that I wouldn't just start rambling in a panic, then spoke again. Are you saying I can't go out with you because you don't have much time left to live? Yes. <laughs> So that's how it is. She loved physical activities, but she was in no condition for them. Under that bright, sunny disposition on the surface lay someone whose hobbies leaned towards introversion. Then answer me something. Why would you come here to Japan if you were in that sort of condition? Wouldn't it be better to be with your family rather than living in a place you aren't familiar with? <laughs> Told me what? Didi replied with a smile devoid of energy. She had indeed said that before, but in light of this revelation about Didi's life circumstances, it took on a wholly new meaning. Would someone really travel halfway around the world to meet a fiancé they don't know? That was what I'd said to myself the day we'd first met. So that's her answer. What the hell? N nah, I kinda jumped the gun there myself. I guess we are even. <laughs> Seeing Didi's smiling face, a myriad of complex feelings swirled around within me. I was distraught, confused, and in denial about what I just heard. But with Didi's attitude about it, denial was not an option for me. Hey, Didi. If I can't deny it, guess I'll just have to accept it. Could we? Try to calm down a little before we talk about this any further. Right now, I doubt either of us really have the capacity to think this through. Especially me. I didn't even know what to say. So, you can go home ahead of me. I just need to clear my head for a bit first. Didi showed no hint of worry or disappointment. I suppose this was something she'd been prepared to talk about for a long time. 
So if I were to just get panicky in front of her right now, it looked totally pathetic. Even if she was physically frail, the last thing I wanted to do was wallow in despair about it. Such was what I convinced myself. I watched Dee Dee leave and verified that she had left the school grounds before standing up from my own seat. Soon after, I opted to drag out my usual commute home by taking the monorail in the opposite direction I usually did. I needed just a little bit more time to process this. Crow peered out of nowhere and muttered that phrase to me. What's that supposed to mean? How do you know that? And just when I was trying to calm myself down here. I thought she had longer than that. Jesus Christ. Oh, so people who are about to die can see you? Thanks for telling me. I am grateful. This isn't a happy subject at all, but I'd have nothing but regret if I never knew to begin with. I sighed deeply. She's not even able to think about being an adult, huh? Dee Dee told me that earlier. I guess this must be why she doesn't have any dreams for the future. I might be reading into it too much, but I can't help but wonder, you know. Her response was nonchalant, but I somehow had a feeling she was deeply concerned as well. I gazed out the train window, going back to calming myself down. The monorail continued along the track slowly making its way towards its final destination. Like the hands of a clock, slowly but steadily. We, too, progress at our own pace towards our final destination. But before we reach that destination, we must decide on our own lots in life. I wonder, has Didi already accepted her own future? Just like I've already accepted my own. Just like how I don't pay any mind to how others may feel about my prosperity. Just like how I am not troubled by how others may take pity on my predetermined destiny. Is that really what she wants? That's the first thing I have to ask, Didi. If she's already accepted her final destination, there is no point in me worrying about it. Rather, I'll have to think of a way to prolong her life. That is, a way to allow her to live out her days in happiness. If things are painful for her, I'll support her with all my heart. How could she live out her precious little time? Was there really nothing I could do? Glancing up at the sky, I clutched the watch in my pocket. With the ability to rewind time by five minutes, no matter how you look at it, for DD, it was an ability with no use whatsoever.